hi everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you're doing well today i share how to cook ofako also known as banga stew so keep watching if you want to see how i make this for the list of ingredients i have the palm kernel seed Scent leaf, this vegetable takes this to you from a 0 to 100. You can also add fresh ugu if you have it. For the protein, I'm using some beef ribs, some chopped onions. You want to be very generous with onions when you're cooking ofaku. Next, I have some seasoning cubes, ogiri okbe, and some salt over here. Scotch bonnet pepper, add as much as you can tolerate. Finally, I have some dry fish and some ground crayfish. So now let's start cooking. So to begin, I washed the palm nut fruit multiple times until it was clean. Next, I'll add the washed palm fruit into a pot, add enough water, cover and start cooking. Thirty minutes later, I check on the palm nut fruit and it is ready. You know it is cooked when you can easily peel off the flesh just like this. So next I'm going to drain it and then extract the juice. Traditionally, we pound this in a mortar, but you know that saying now that there are so many ways to kill a cat. So there is no mortar here today. I've poured it into this bowl. I'm going to use this wooden thing to keep rubbing it gently just like this until everything is open. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I'm going to keep doing it like this till I'm satisfied. Also, if you don't have this wooden thing, you can use a Coke bottle, a wine bottle, any round bottle that has a flat bottom will do the job. Once that is done, transfer it into a big enough bowl. In my case, I'm using the pot I used to cook the palm fruit. I'm going to start rinsing off with warm water or hot water as long as your hands can tolerate it. It is best to do this when it is still hot and you don't want to use cold water so that you get the most out of the palm kernel juice. As I rinse, I'm going to try to separate the shaft from the seed and then leave the juice in the pot. So once I finish with the first batch, I'm going to now sieve it and then continue until everything is done. So when I was straining it, I noticed that my sieve was a little bit too fine and it was making me lose the richest part of this palm kernel juice. So I had to switch my sieve to a bigger one. You don't want to miss the cocoa, the cocoa. So I switched. So this is ready now. I'll set it aside. Next, add the wash meat into a pot. Some of the chopped onions. The seasoning cubes. Stir that in, cover and let it cook in its own juice for 15 minutes. While that is cooking, I'll grind the pepper and the ogiri okbe. If your crayfish is not grinded, grind it together with this as well. I added a little bit of salt to help make it sharper. You don't have to. Once that is done, I transferred it into a bowl, rinsed out the earthen pot with some water and set it aside. Next, I'm going to pour some hot water over the dry fish so it can soak for about 5 minutes before I wash it. But I spared you all that. Just make sure you wash your dry fish with hot water. It will help kill all those nyama nyama things that you may not see. So at this point, I check on the beef and it has rendered a lot of juice on its own. So now I'm going to just stir that around, add enough water, cover and let it cook until it is almost done. Twenty minutes later, the beef is almost cooked, so now I'm going to transfer it onto a baking rack and then grill it for about 25 minutes. 
the aim here is not to make it dry so you want to keep an eye on it this stage is completely optional but then i love the texture it adds to the beef So I cover with some parchment paper so that it does not splash to the top of the oven. Next add the banga juice into a pot. When you add the banga juice, don't cover the pot or add any ingredient until it boils. When it boils, you can now go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients. If you cover it before it boils, it's going to boil over. It's been boiling now, so next I'm going to add the washed fish. The grounded pepper and the whey, some crayfish, the rest of the onion, the grilled meat, and the meat stock. At this point, I tasted to see if I needed a little more salt or seasoning cube, then I added a little salt. So it's been boiling but the oil have not floated to the top. You want to continue cooking until the oil visibly flows to the top of the soup. Then you know it has cooked for long enough and that the banga is cooked. So once the oil flows to the top just like this, now I'm going to add the chopped scent leaf. And you guys, this scent leaf for me is the climax of this soup. It takes this soup from a 0 to 100. You don't want to miss it. So I'm going to add that in and let it cook for another 2 to 3 minutes so it can infuse into this, this stew. Three minutes later i take it off the heat you can make yours as thick as you want you guys know i have children yes and i want this stew to last to have this banga self is not a joke so i don't want to waste it at all but please feel free to make yours as thick as you like it to be serve over some rice and enjoy you guys rice and stew is old school this is what you should be enjoying especially if you have access to palm kernel fruit you should make this stew as often as possible so yeah this is it send me pictures on instagram if you try this recipe don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't please subscribe share this video and give me a like if you enjoyed watching see you in my next one bye